Hey guys, it's your boy Blastnight coming at it again with another PTCGO video. And today I'm actually going to introduce myself and who I am and what I'm trying to accomplish within this channel. This is actually my second channel that I'm going at it again. I lost the password to my first channel and you can figure out the rest from there. But now I'm going to start fresh, start new. I'm actually starting better because this account that I'm using is attached to my company's Gmail and so if you haven't figured it out yet who I am um, I sell in Burbank a lot and I'm always trying to promote my company and I'm always trying to promote um, you know my little small business that I started I got competitively into the game when I was in 2016 and that was with Dallas Regionals for being standard. And that's when Evetl EX was big at the time. And so my actual that was my actual big first regional. And I played Rainbow Bambi and Rainbow Xerneas. So the one that could do huge damage. I actually still have the deck here, I believe. That was my big regional. Um, from then on, I was played the game super competitively and that would this makes it what about a year and a half that i've been playing the game competitively i actually did my first audition for what was it utah when on my first channel so to commentate and to announce and i was pretty excited i didn't have the best deck back then when i auditioned um, my channel wasn't also either explosive my other channel, I think it got up to 15 subscribers. I really did slow down, um, life hit me in the way, but now I'm pretty positive that I can come back and make a bigger effect, um, even do better. I have put some money into my account. I've also done a lot of grinding into my account. And so I've also kept up with the meta. Um, after Dallas, though, this past one in 2017, or what would it be, 2018? Yeah, it was 2018. Um, I also slowed down the game to focus on school and to, you know, maybe like focus on the actual game itself and see where it was going. It was really unstable for a while. I felt like it was unstable. We didn't know what we were doing. There was new decks coming out. It just didn't become fun and appealing as much to me and so i just sat back forbidden light actually started to kick in everything into the staple meta that i saw a lot of things were becoming consistent a lot of things could win could not win um we saw laughers come back but that's not the point so the point is that i got back into the game i'm here actually really strong a lot of people have told to me and a lot of people actually have been helping me with the channel. Uh, Mike Myers was also one of the biggest helps, and Will Bain was one of the biggest helps. Uh, you do see him post. They're both big collectors. I try to buy off their codes as often as I can. I usually don't buy codes when the meta's unstable, and that's just unstable online. Um, and it was unstable for quite a while when Forbidden Light came out. Um, Outcast didn't actually do his release until, I believe, three weeks later. And everything became stable then. Um, and especially Ultra Necrozoma was super unstable for a while. We couldn't get a good grip. Um, I felt a little salty when I saw Ultra Necrozoma came out. And so that's when I started buying codes. Recently, I had somebody try to get rid of codes for, um, pretty quickly. I helped the guy out and bought some codes and so my goal for this channel is to help give people a new perspective help give back to a little bit of to the community um i always want to give back i want to always put a new point of view and i know sometimes that's hard especially with an oversaturated market and something like this um, there's a lot of good people out there there's a lot of good pokey tubers always try to make it always trying to go pretty far um and we're seeing them on Twitch, we're seeing them on YouTube, and we're seeing them on all kinds of different platforms. Twitter, Instagram, and you know, people are doing different things with Pokemon. You got Pokemon Go. And so I just want to be part of that community because I know I started 
pretty strong. I started when I had Adobe Premiere and I could actually make better videos. And so now I'm back without Adobe Premiere. I'm trying to trying to start a little bit more humble, I guess you could say. And hopefully I get back up. Um, I am looking for a sponsorship and I hope to prove myself for a sponsorship. I do want to make videos. I do want to educate people. I do want to do weekends where it's three videos um, for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I want to do Sunday um, streaming. And I was doing Sunday streaming for a while and uh, my gaming laptop actually broke down and I had to send it back, send it back to Asus for them to adjust it and fix it because Exotic PC actually did not install a proper piece within it. And so that kind of upset me that I had to wait. Um, I did three or four streams before the laptop actually failed. I actually have one recorded stream up and I've actually been listening to Twitch and how to grow your Twitch audience, how to grow your platforms. And so I'm gonna go back on YouTube. It was kind of nerve wracking because I haven't actually done this in quite a while. And so I'm just trying to get it back into the mo momentum of things, I'm trying to figure out where I can go and how my recording style is, how my Twitch style is. And I want to actually be the best I can and I actually want to grow. So with that being said, growing my next big regionals with my friends are going to be Memphis, St. Louis, and Dallas. Dallas is a guaranteed weather. I do Memphis and St. Louis is still up in the air, but that is the goal to go to those three and take toward, um, dominate and hopefully land in top 32. The goal is top eight. And so for Dallas, I do want to take Dallas. I This would be my third time and I feel like third time's the charm. I did make it up to the top 32 during my last two big regionals for Dallas um, and I was exploding to the top and the last games were not my top cut um, for both actually. Um, it was just bad draws, it was bad luck at the very end of the day and so it, it kicked me out of the top cut and so it put me in the hundreds place. Um, overall for both and I was kind of bitter but I'd rather have lost by a lot than a little bit and be like one away from being the top cut. Um, I always went with great friends with a great team and um, they're just great people in general you know we've grown a little bit and I've grown as a player they've grown as players. Uh, we'll actually be doing side events purely side events so you'll see me doing poking tournament and doing small tournaments within one of these and it won't be at Dallas that it won't be joking off. Um, Dallas is expanded for this upcoming 2018-2019. Upcoming um, so I will be going full on. I will be doing a lot of experimenting. We did multiple hours of experimentation. Uh, we grinded all, for a good portion of that night before we went to Dallas and so I come I'm hoping to come back with that same attitude and not get discouraged. I know one of my team members, Angry Hogo Puffs, won't be coming in um, doing that expanded tournament. He doesn't like expanded, and I get it. It's been expanded and expanded all over the place. So he won't be participating. I don't know if um, Boosted Subaru will come actually with him. And those are two great buddies of mine, and you'll actually see him on here a lot and trying to help me grow with this channel. So that's another thing. And if you actually made it this far within the video, I want to say thank you for listening this far and seeing who I am. I haven't been playing much, I know. But if you like this video, share it, subscribe. Um, I'll also put the links down in for my company page on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. But please like and share. Um, comment on the video below and I'll choose a random person and you'll get five forbidden pack lights today for liking and sharing this video. And please subscribe to this channel. And if you are a subscriber to the channel, you'll get an extra two packs. Gotta start off small. Don't wanna reel everyone in, but you'll receive an extra two panels. So just for liking and sharing the video, you'll get five. For actually subscribing, you'll be entered to win a chance when seven forbidden light packs. 
And so with also this channel, the goal is to grow by 500 by the time the summer ends and I start school back in again August, and I believe it's August 22nd. I feel like it's very doable, and hopefully I have in my laptop. I believe I can grow this channel very far in a short amount of time. So thank you for tuning in today, and we're actually going to get started with the deck I have on file. And you, typically I would do the recent Madison winners and the top eight, and I did that recently on a Twitch channel for Portland. Uh, on Twitch stream, my bad. And I did um, the top eight, and I thought that was pretty successful in talking over it. I do want to talk about Expanded, though, since Expanded um, is my main goal to get better and to finally understand the meta. And this was recently Japan's best deck when Forbidden Light came out over there. It was doing super well. If you watched the Tokyo regionals or the J Japan regionals recently, you saw that Rayquaza EX, uh, GX took the meta by storm. And I haven't fully looked into it. And I'll put some links on the Facebook page to you so you can read that article and see how that functioned. But this deck caught my interest. This is actually one of my most successful decks. And I actually play this quite often. Um, I've never played against Night March, and I'm kind of excited to see where it goes against Night March if I do play it. And so I think it was super interesting to see, to play, and to understand the functionality and the core of the deck. I played enough games to see where it's gone and where it's going, and how to get it out of the a lot of situations um, of course with expanded you can never know what you see since it's current it's usually unstable um, you do get a lot of rogue decks and a lot of decks that you would never expect to see and so we actually got three stars I would say two main stars but three stars within this deck and this big bad boy right here ultra necro Zoma Z Zoma uh, ultra necro I like to call it and so it's actually a really broken card if it's used properly for one psychic and for one metal discard all the psychic from this pokemon does 80 more damage for each card you discard in this way and so if you have two psychic energies and a choice band that's 210 currently knocking out a lot of things and that's actually really doable by turn two and especially within expanded since we have a lot of things that can throw away psychic energy and attach but we also have that gx attack as well um something that we're not going to use quite often you might do it every blue moon if you're really falling behind and you can't not catch up but it places six counters um six damage counters on each of your opponent's pokemon and you can only use this gx attack if the total amount of prize cards re is six or less and i'm pretty sure i should be reading off um another way we can accomplish hitting that 210 is using dawn wings necro and dawn wings is basically a russian stand-in but now we have the ability invasion and so what it does is once during your turn before your attack if this pokemon is on your bench you may switch it with one of your active pokemon and see we carry two float stones to make this oh actually three flow stones to make this possible especially since we're seeing a lot of field blower to Go guzma to actually make this if it gets stuck to make a switch but you're asking now how are we going to get those psychic energies on ultra necro and the answer is melamar melamar variations have been all over the place in standard in expanded making its way um finding any psychic pokemon that it can and attaching that psychic energy or psychic attackers and it's really great to see a pokemon that's a stage one have such a powerful ability and yes we were seeing a lot of people trying to take these down during the games and so psychic recharge is actually the ability that comes really handy it's once during your turn before your attack you may attach a psychic energy card from your discard of pile to one of your bench pokemon and so that's when the combo of invasion from ultra necro and um the attack of ultra necro i mean the invasion from dawn wings and the power of ultra necro 
And so that floatstone retreat for free retreat is also great because you don't have to be wasting a two, even though the two is super easy to put on. And then we would have that dark flash for 120. It's super great because we can always do psychic recharge and we for I prefer to use the moon eclipse GX attack. And this is only allowed to be used if I, if I have more prize cards remaining than my opponent and it prevents all effects of attacks that include damage done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn, which is great for 180. You can do 210 on a Pokemon and hit for an instant KO. Things like Wailmer, uh, Waylord and uh, Solgaleo and Metagross. And so it's a lot of great things that are being seen and you can do with this deck. Next player is Lunala, Prism Star. And Lunala actually, if you're not getting that momentum that you need within the first early to mid game, um, full Moonstar actually helps with that. For each of your opponents, Pokemon play attach a psychic energy card from your discard pile to your Pokemon in any play you like. Slipestorm is not actually used, but it's basically um, 20 times the amount of of energy attached to all Pokemon, kind of broken, but it is a one prize attacker and it's kind of costly to be quite honest. But full moon star, you can attach to Dawn Wings and you can attach to Ultra. We have the Mew here to as a one star attacker, and since Ultra Necro is a basic, Mew can actually use Memories of Dawn to duplicate that attack for a one prize. And I think it's actually really great that we're seeing such variation because we can. For a choice fan and one psychic energy and the metal energy, we're going to be hit Okoing, Buzz Wolves, and any fighting that are weak to psychic to tap Lele to bring in everything that we need. And everybody knows that Lele by now, using Wonder Tag as its ability to grab a draw support or a supporter, it doesn't have to be draw support. To battle comps to throw away things that we need, I usually throw away uh, four energies in total. One Beast Ring, so when your opponent takes that actual two prize cards, or even three prize cards, that we can start powering up powerful Pokemon. One Field Blower to blow away Field Stones. Um, not only Field um, not Field Stones, um, Float Stones, but to be blowing away other Choice Bands, Parallel Cities, any stadiums that are in play. Mysterious Treasure. Oops. And if you don't know Mysterious Treasure, it's discard a card from your hand. And if you do search for a Psychic or Dragon Pokemon Revealer and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. So here we're just running nothing but Psychic and Dragon, mostly uh, Psychic. And so it's really helpful. One Rescue Stretcher to shuffle back things in from discard and to put into our hand. Two Ultra Balls, since we're using four Mysterious Treasures, there's no need for... Uh, Four Ultra Balls, we actually have two, my bad. Two Ultra Balls, and to be getting anything we need. Four Versus Seeker. And since we're not carrying that much supporters, it, I get rid of one of each copy. I'll try to keep the teammates in there. Uh, two Parallel City, and right now, if you can get Parallel City on first, you're basically getting that money. It's good stuff. Uh, you're slowing down your opponent a lot. One Bridget to bring out to have hopefully an explosive start. If not, that Mysterious Treasure and Ultra Ball comes in handy. We have two Guzma to be switching out things. A total of evil aren't six Guzma. I don't think you'll ever use six Guzma. Two N. N. Let me let me say something with N. N is used for middle game and end game. And it should be strictly used to that. There is desperate times where you do need to use an N early game, but you don't want to be giving your N. Now, I didn't make this list, but I prefer Cynthia, one Cynthia, one N, but that's not me. Um, you probably could actually trade out that Sycamore, but you just want to get, get stuff out and make sure that bench and that active is set. So for Sycamore to be discarding everything. Now, teammates, teammates cease play on and off a lot. We did see a lot inside Night March, and for those who don't know, teammates, you can play this card only if one of your Pokemon has knocked out was knocked out during your opponent's last turn. Search your deck for two, up to two cards and put them into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterwards. And so grab any two cards, anything you need. And it becomes a little bit dangerous with such a powerful deck. Uh, I saw a lot of success in Night March. I see a lot of success 
in this deck. Uh, two choice bands. Really, it's a good number uh, because you're already hitting for so much. You can second recharge anything you need. Three floodstones. It's a good number. Um, Dawn Wings doesn't take a lot to retreat either. So if all I mean you, so be careful. Make sure um, you calculate how many field blowers that your opponent has. Field blower usually is one to two copies. I've seen three on very rare occasions. Beast energy um, actually works really well because this card, while this card is attached to an Ultra Beast, it provides every type of energy but provides only one energy at a time. This attack of the Ultra Beast card is attached to you does 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. So not only that, but it gets it's like a free choice, man. And it's such a powerful card because it provides everything you need to an Ultra Beast. And basically, we are attacking with Ultra Beast. So it does um, that metal, which becomes really helpful. It, it's another choice, man. It's a really good card. The only bad thing about it is a, it's a Prism Star. So once it's gone, it's gone. We have a unit energy, which is also super successful because you have a second and metal. And I'm pretty sure you can use one of the other blend energies. Um, I just think it's so pretty that the unit energy can be used in this deck. And since we are using um, so many other energies, this would be, a, I, uh, you could say it's four metal energies and nine psychics or you could be 11 psychics and two metals but you really want to stay strict to this condition of using nothing these two energies for metal um i think the deck would be even more consistent if it had energies and i have switched it up a little bit but this was just japan's best and so we have nine psychic energies and two metals with that being said going in the depth analysis I'll actually show you guys a few examples. I was playing standard earlier. You can also see that video on my channel, on my current channel. For my old channel, I will be attaching the first YouTube video. I will be attaching the first, um, to the first 10 videos, I will be attaching a link to my old channel. Um, I think there's three or four videos on there. I haven't looked at it much. Like I said, I lost the password to it. Uh, but you can see some of my early work, and I'm actually going to try to be focusing on this new channel and hopefully growing this new channel. As you can see, we have a mulligan here. Fun fact, I live by Pokestop, so occasionally you'll hear me stop talking and spin, a po um, spin the Pokestop. How many mulligans? We only have one mulligan. I'm going to put Dawn Wings first. It looks like another Psychic deck. I could be wrong. People place things all the time. I'm actually glad we have this Floatstone. It actually looks like a Beast Box deck. And if it's not going to be Beast Box deck, it's going to be a variation of um, Malamar and Poipol. And what is it? Oh, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this. Nag Naga... Nagadella, something like that. So it's most this player is most likely going in for. Okay, it is the Beast Fox variation. Um, they should have Bridget in hand. I don't know why they would not. They maybe have Lele in hand. I don't know what's going on with him actually. They're ready to start hitting. We're pretty hard. And so... I don't have draw support. I feel like that's not much of a issue. I mean, it should be an issue. This is where I wish I had a Cynthia. Because a Cynthia would throw everything back in. Um, I really don't want to give them... This is what I mean, like, a Cynthia should come in handy. Because now I have the option of anning or just stick and more in everything. I'm going to use Bridget. I'm just going to Bridget for everything that I need. Um, this is actually going to be really helpful. This Mew is going to do a lot of our work for us.
I'm not going to touch the floodstone just yet. I don't want to field blower off, especially when I don't need it to be field blower off. Uh, I knew they were going to use my. This is going to be harsh. This is not the hand I was expecting, and I probably should have end. Uh, I'm going to put Donald Wing's Necrozoma. This would be... That was not ideal. Um, what's the best option? What's the best option? I'm going to Guzma... I'm not going to put the here. I'm going to use Muse Actual Attack and not even dig. That's rough. I'm going to have to find that Floatstone now. Or not the Floatstone. I'm going to have to find that Rescue Stretcher and I should have checked if I had the Rescue Stretcher. Uh, I do think this deck firmly needed. Um, there's the Floatstone. I was a strong believer that this deck needed. Um, uh, a third Necro, dang, I don't believe the deck is so well, Beast Box has been a lot of problems, I don't know how it's looking and expanded, alright, I was a firm believer that it needed a third Ultra Necro though, um, I don't know why you would do that though. Uh, rough, 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 rough. Floodstone, Floodstone. I'm just going to change the choice band. I'm getting rid of everything. How many do they have? Uh, they only have three. That's highly unlikely that they have anything. After this, I'm going to play one more game. Hopefully, I get everything I need. I mean, that's not everything I needed, but still great enough. So I'm actually going to attach. We're going to get the KO here, but I'm going to get rid of stuff too. And the deck actually functions really well within itself. Uh, we actually do have the Rescue Stretcher, but now we're going to throw in you and everything else. I'm going to get rid of an N for a little bit more consistency. Um... And so here, this is where Psychic Recharge becomes super handy, because now I have a potential for three Malamar on the bench. Uh, I was hoping I would have missed Clark. And now I'm going to Invasion. This is where the GX attack becomes super handy. And now I'm Invincible for... This turn, unless they goose my out something. And I even have this mysterious treasure so I can go back in and get the last Melamar that I need. Um, teammates, I can just throw away immediately with that Sycamore. They only have two, so they're doing 40. I'm weak against Dark. That's three. I'm surprised. That's all I need, really. I'm surprised there's not being more of a. It wouldn't even be worth it because it'd be eight on the bench if you're using Sky. If you are using Skyfield, and nine, so we're at nine times two. It's basically um, nine times two is the one eighty plus choice bands two ten. Uh, but that's a lot, a lot of Ultra Beast on the bench. And then to be hit with a Parallel City, it'd be a little bit harsh on you. 
So I wish I had Field Blower. Um, Unala would have been great. 60, 120, and there's not much I could do. I wouldn't want to give up. I think I'm just going to hit. I want to get rid of stuff. Ink J, I don't need you anymore. I'll get rid of one mysterious treasure. I don't want nothing to happen. And Guzma, I'd rather keep. I'm just going to throw away these two to be safer. Oh, my bad. Dark Flash. I read it wrong. Dark Flash actually isn't affected by resistance. I thought it was, um, this damage doesn't do weakness or resistance. Totally read that wrong. Actually, now we're going to actually win the game. That was totally my bad. I recorded it wrong. It, I don't know what it's field blowing for, but it could be those two floodstones. Actually, that lighted my mood. I didn't think I was going to win this one. So the deck actually remains more consistent than I thought. Um, I don't know what one Guzma's going to do. I don't think it can. It thinks I have anything. Um, I'm actually going to Guzma out that baby Poipole and start hitting it. Poipole's description in the Pokédex is actually kind of dark. One says it's gonna it spreads out poison towards its opponent, and one's like it's the most faithful Pokemon that you'll meet, something like that. That's one down. It that this person needs a miracle. I feel kind of bad that I just wrecked. Especially since I didn't know I was going to wreck. It's thinking I would have conceded by now. And you'll notice throughout my videos that I'll concede more quite often than not. Um, I'll be conceding because I just want to save the time. I don't want to waste anybody's time. I, don't, I think it's kind of rude to waste people's time when you could be making a better part of the video. That wasn't an insult, but you know, you gotta actually mean it. You have to mean, like, they try, they make their best effort. And I don't wanna be rude or anything, but like, they made a big effort. It, I have the most consistent thing with doing 1080 as damage overall during some games. Let's see, let's see. Let's do one more. I could fix it up. I'm wait, actually waiting to do uh, maybe one episode review. Maybe it'll be another another episode. Um, that the actual video of Madison. Yeah, it was Madison. I, uh, you always want to go first in this deck. You want to go as first as possible, as much as possible. Let's see what we have right here. Um, let's see. This is actually a really good start. This is the start I like to see and be most consistent with. This is where I have a Bridget in hand. I have a Lele getting ready. I have an Ultra Ball, a mysterious treasure actually. Um, so there's so much I can do. So, so, so much. I even get two mulligans to the hand. I even get to attach a special energy. This is just the ideal start. Um, I don't know if it's the ideal deck to play against. I don't know what they're playing. It's probably that Raichu that paralyzes. I'm going to attach. I already have a Sycamore. Plus, I can get rid of the energy. 
I don't know if I should drop down another, I should drop there on the Mew or an Ultra Necro. Uh, this is where I wish I had Cynthia. I even have time to do a recharge and hit, so the goal is to knock out. Um, do you know what? I can drop the Sycamore and the Lele. And place down whatever I needed. I'm going to grab the Mew. And have a fully loaded bench. Getting ready to go. So they actually have to do a better setup. Than I did. Um, I don't know if it's, that's completely possible. They're having comp search. And that's actually one of this, uh, the flaws of this deck. That I, that I saw. It doesn't have... And A specs. And A specs are super important within Expanded. And I can't believe I forgot about that. A specs are super important within Expanded because it makes uh, mediocre decks a whole lot, whole lot better. It turns mediocre decks into overpowered decks. I don't know what he's actually searching for. Probably Bridget. Seeing what they have. I should be looking thoroughly for what I have. Um, I just got too excited. And so, you should always see what's in your deck so you can work around it because you need to start knowing the deck so well that you can work with the prize cards rather than um, what's in your deck. So you know what you can do, what you can do. Man, I wish I didn't have to throw this away. Let's bring up the Sycamore. Let's throw away um, the Mysterious Treasure. There's Beast Energy. Um, I didn't even get it like I wanted to. Since I'm not discarding an energy, you can't technically. Let's throw two away. Let's throw the teammates away. I already have two Guzmas. Um, this is actually going to be super hard just because I can't throw away anything. I don't think it'll let me throw away. Um, might as well power out the Mew. Ooh, excuse me. Did not mean to do that on people's ears. Thank you for tuning in. I'm going to try to add a little bit of music to this. I'm going to hopefully, so when there is quiet moments while I'm thinking, but you guys just don't listen to me breathe or anything. Um, what are they looking for? I still haven't figured out. I still haven't figured out what they're trying to play. I'm pretty sure it's that Raichu. It could also be somebody learning the game and they just have whatever they have to work with and I had the same thing um my first deck I don't have it anymore but the first deck I used was somewhat of a water box um it was the thing I grinded years for years for uh, my account's officially four years old and so it took me a while to get where I was and so they actually surrendered they probably didn't have what they were looking for. Um, I remember those days when people would have beefy, beefy accounts. I wouldn't play with them. Um, just because it wasn't anything that I could win against. That makes my third win. Let's actually, uh, I'll keep the packs. And what I usually do with packs, I wait for the next rotation to come and anything that I have collected within those packs that are locked, I open it. Um, when Sun and Moon Guardians Rising actually goes out, I'm actually going to do a big show where a huge stream and a huge giveaway. And hopefully for every Lele that I pull, I'll give 15 packs away. Um, that's where I want to be. So hopefully within a year, I have the privilege to do that. So look out. I usually stream the big pack openings when I do them with locked packs. And it helps with the account. Two. 
um, on the coin toss. Hopefully we get a really good hand like we did the first time around, because that hand was fantastic, and I mean fan-fantastic. It was just something, nope, it wasn't as good. Comment your what level you are in Pokemon Go. I actually have two accounts. I tried switching out everything um, from my first account when I played in 2016. Um, it was just way too beefy and there's no way you can possibly trade accounts. So I just have that account sitting. Um, I wish I could have honestly done more with it. Just because I probably didn't have to use the U-Ball here. Do I actually have the Bridget? If not, I'm going to be upset. Okay, I do have Bridget. Um, so I started off with Team Mystic. Yeah, I go Team Mystic. Um, that was my count. I didn't know how powerful Team Valor would have been. Um, Team Valor has so many gems. It's unbelievable. Team Mystic does well within my area. But it's not where I would like it. I want to use the Mysterious Treasure to go back in and grab the Dawn Wings. So I switched over to my second account on Team Valor. Um, that account isn't as beefy. I'm at level 19. My Team Mystic is at level 22, going on level 23. I'm also level 20 within my Team Valor. Um, just my Pokemon aren't as great. Um, I did explode within... I did notice I was exploding better within my Team Go, but, or my Team Valor, and it's just because there's more Pokemon. But anyways, enough about Team, or about Pokemon Go. Um, let's get back to this deck. I see a Colrus. This deck also doesn't use Colrus, but you gotta remember, in Japan they have a different format than we do. And their format's a whole lot of modern, standard, and expanded. So I'm surprised we could actually make this deck a full expanded. I haven't been seeing much Skyfield playing. I haven't seen straight Zorox or Zorox variations being played with an expanded. Um, I don't even have the choice band. Here's the unit energy that I needed. I'm gonna... I can actually get the, the KO. I'm gonna... I don't have any more Malamars, do I? All three Malamars are pri- or two of them are prized. This is ridiculous. I'm gonna get rid of a, two of these though. I'll one in. I don't want to throw in you just yet, just because I don't have more attackers. I don't have the privilege of more attackers, especially with two Mars being prized, which really hurts the deck. Inconsiderably hurts the deck. I'm sure I actually spend more some time with you. I have a little bit of responsibilities to do. Oh man. broken. I have some responsibilities to do, so I'm going to cut the video a little bit short today, but I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in and staying through the video, watching it. Um, thank you for making it this far if you have made it, made it this far. I'm um, still trying to see where I stand and what I want these videos to be, and it's going to take me quite a while. Um, I'm trying to get Xeno509, if you guys know who Xeno509 is, um, props to him. He did a lot of my artwork. Um, I'm trying to get him to coach me on how to do my style and see where this is going. Um, I know they're not going to be the greatest videos when they start off. It's just going to be really hard to see where my style is. Um, that's not what I wanted to see either. I knew that was going to happen. Um, since I don't want them actually destroying. 
I'm going to do the socket recharge. I mean, there's only one socket, but I'd rather them destroy a prison star than anything else. I'm trying to get Zeno to coach me, like I said. Um, thank you for tuning in. And so, good luck to whoever actually wins the for the seven packs. If you subscribe, the five packs if you don't. But please like and share. Please subscribe. Please comment. And help. Commenting will actually be a lot more helpful for me to give away the prize. But let's play some Pokemon. Um, I'm going to throw away these things I don't need. I have one more Lele. Um, I'm going to have to go in. I don't want to give him five. But I have six. I don't want to throw away these two. This is where I said like Cynthia should have been more consistent within this deck. I'll just do the end. It's not even middle game. I consider middle game once you hit three and four prize cards. Um, early game is still five and six, but this is like late early game. And I'm actually going to use a GX attack so they can be forced to Guzma and me out. And of course, I was hoping I would draw one of those Malamars to start recharging everything in. Um, Do I have Guzma? I should have probably threw away Guzma. So now she's going to be easy money, easy taking. Um, I don't like seeing that Colrus. That's eight free cards, throwing everything back in. Hopefully next week I can put my own variation. And within these videos I'll be doing, within the weekend videos I'll be doing, hopefully, um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday will be three videos, so it will usually be two standard, one expanded, and vice versa, one expanded, uh, or two expanded, one standard, and maybe even some legacy, we can get some legacy. Legacy actually, actually slowed down within the PTCGO um, game, and I saw it slow down on my behalf um, just because a lot of people weren't playing it. And a lot of people would, but some of those old cards are super expensive. Um, you can't actually do much with them. Uh, I'm not going to actually do that. And it's like, if you don't have the beefy account, you can't be... If you don't have the beefy account, you can't be getting those old cards. And some of these um, cards are pretty hard to get and my call I'm on a mission to get all of the call of legends energy and I want all those energies just because they look super cool and they look a lot rarer than actually the secret rares energies um, the only thing I am disappointed I will have to invest the time or the money into getting 12 secret fair, secret rare fairy energy since there is no call of legends um, energy and so I do want 14 of each, just so the decks can look a little bit better. Um, everything is actually just for aesthetics. Sycamore. Why would you need Garantina Prism Star? Chaotic Star. I didn't think this was a good card anyways. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, during your turn you may attach two second energy cards from your hand to it. Um... It's mediocre. I could see it in a better Melomar variation. I honestly don't know what this deck was. I just see cards everywhere. It's just a lot of Psychic everywhere. I'm hoping I draw out. Nope, I didn't draw it. I was really hoping not that I would draw the the Guzma. It's weak against dark. It's 120, 160. Um, I'm going to give him a lifeline. I'm 
that's what I love about this deck too. You can always throw in the throw in the energy back. You're just recycling energy. There's nothing that goes to waste within this deck. It's full functionality. I'm gonna give them a lifeline. I usually don't like to give people lifelines. Um, I wouldn't even be surprised if they came in with the Donald Wings and hit with the GX attack. I'm looking for that battle comp. Yeah, I already threw both away. Probably should have thrown that Guzma away first. Let's see, what are they trying to do? Um, I don't know what they're trying to look for. That end actually really helps. Hopefully I get the Guzma or not. I knew they were going to come and smack me with that. The GX attack. Let's see. Um, choice fan. There's not much to really do. I probably shouldn't have given the lifeline. Should have been a little bit more patient. I don't know what I want to do. Um, I'm just going to hit. I'm just going to retreat. I might as well start distributing everything evenly in hopes that they do anything. That end really hurt. They use that end at a perfect time. What's the point? Don't give lifelines. Even though how amazing they're doing. Or how bad they're doing. This is all they probably needed to. And we have the Guzma. That's all I wanted. All I wanted from the start. They're probably going to retreat. I knew they were going to retreat. And they just won the game. <sighs> lesson learned. Don't give a lifeline. That was my mistake. But you learn lessons. I was just trying to get ahead. And that was totally my fault. But I won't be doing that anymore. But again, I'd like to thank everyone for stopping by. Uh, and just thank you. And hopefully you guys can stay and see the growth. And I'm excited to be with everyone and teach everything new. The lesson you should have learned from today is don't give a lifeline. Don't always think you're ahead. Always be on top of your game. Don't ever relax. So hope to see you guys next week. And hopefully we can get back onto streaming. So until next time, take care of yourselves.